It's just... I love Bobby. I, I did. <laughs> there's just too much. There's this case. There's every other case. There's Thomas, who's on my ass, and I hate him. I hate him for... I wanted to help people. Shane. <laughs> I started this oh, to help people. So you made some adjustments to the original floor plan. Adjustments? Well, uh, this window wasn't in the original blueprints. Ah, I had Tony put that in last second. I uh, thought it would brighten up the place. Sure. Now, if there's anything else I can help you with, I'm expecting someone. Sure thing. So, uh, despite what Lieutenant DeAngelis may think of you, I've been monitoring your progress since you got here about a year and a half ago, and I must say you've been doing very well. Oh, well, I'm glad you think so. Sorry. I, I know so. Which brings me to my point. I think it's time for you to move up in the station. Really? Be me? Yes, really. Effective immediately, I'm promoting you to detective. Thank you. No need to thank me. Just doing my job. You should see the, the raise in your next paycheck. Thank you. Hey, Captain. Sorry I'm late. I just got your text. How can I help you? Oh, sorry, it's okay. I was just getting done giving Mr. Cole her promotion. Her what, I'm sorry? Promotion. A promotion for this officer, Sekola. That's Detective Sekola. Oh, don't push it. Detective. Uh, congratulations, I guess. Thank you, Lieutenant. Well, if you don't mind, grown ups have business to discuss, so get out. Whatever you say. You brought me down here just to see that, just to piss me off. God, you're doing a good job. <laughs> of course not. I called you down here because I have something I need Ronnie and Tony to deal with. Well, take a look up there. We are stretched a little thin right now. I promise it won't take any time at all. It's just a drug and disorderly call downtown. Okay. Uh, well, Cap, all due respect, I think a missing child and a walking corpse are a little bit more important than a drunk at a fucking restaurant, I, don't I, you? I understand how you feel. But we can't let one or two high-profile cases get in the way of the normal workings of the city. We have to take care of that, too. Normal workings of the city. Look, Cap, I've been nice. I've been putting up with your shit for a long time. I've been trying really hard to keep my mouth shut. And as long as I'm your captain, you'll continue to do so. Yes, sir. Thank you. And what did she get for her service? Erased. And the government just deleted her because they knew they screwed up.
So who is this guy? He was a drunken, disorderly, dangerous had us working on. We found outside the wharf, causing trouble. Causing trouble how? His name is Jake Wainwright, and he was a one-man protest. He was running around like some drunken maniac, yelling about some conspiracy theory. He was disrupting business and scaring away customers, so, so we arrested him. That's nothing. Was he getting violent with anyone or making any threats? No, nothing like that. I think he's deeply disturbed about something. I mean, I'm not saying I believe his war stories or anything, but he's pretty earnest. Ronnie, he's just some crazy drunk. Let's get back to the real crimes, shall we? Not so fast, Tony. I at least want to give Mr. Wainwright a chance to explain himself. What is he saying happened to him anyway? I mean, was he in the military at all? He has military records. They say he was a petty officer in the Navy. And he says that some girl was kidnapped by the government from his unit during a mission. And you believe that? That's enough. Okay, this is not a priority, considering all the other crazy things we have going on right now. So once he sobers up, cut him loose. There's no point wasting Wildwood's money keeping him in jail. Okay, Megan, you got it. Whatever. What is with that pen? It's a quill. Oh, it's lovely, but why? Well, I don't think you were here, but there was a day when Thomas kind of got us all together and said, I'm boss, you all have to be step up and like act like police officers, lame. So anyway, he says that we have to have like all our suits on all the time and we have to be serious and we're only allowed to have our pens and our laptops and assorted official crap on our desks, right? So I was like, well, are we allowed to have like ink for our pens? And he said, yes, you're being facetious, stop, you know, something like that. And so I was like, okay, great. So I came in and I brought a quill and I brought writing ink, Italian writing ink. Oh, wow. Because honestly, Thomas is an ass. So. Okay, well, yeah, that's really clever. I appreciate it. I liked it. I think it's very... It's classy. Oh, uh, Monica, could you remember to give me a reminder for my 10 o'clock appointment with the chief? Sure, can you write that down? Sure, and while you're at it, you can convert all my emails to smoke signals and I'll go use the outhouse. I got your call. Is everything okay? Oh, don't make that face. That looks like bad news. Is, is, have you found Michelle? Is she okay? Uh, we, we haven't found Michelle yet, but there have been some developments. Um, this is going to be really hard to say. Um, your ex-husband didn't take Michelle, but we have linked her to some cases up and down the East Coast. Are you sure? We're very sure. And I assure you that there's nothing to suggest that she's been harmed in any way, and we're working very hard on the case. I'm sorry, I have to take this. Sakula. Ronnie, it's Dr. Wagner. You still the Draper case, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, why? I just texted text you an address. You better get down here. A bunch of hikers will come to grave, and the police have found the bodies of two female children. What? What's going on? Officer oh, Sakula, please tell me what's going on. Hey, Doc. What up? Did you know that pufferfish is a delicacy in Japan, despite the fact it's highly toxic and causes 20 to 40 poisonings a year? Um, what the hell are you talking about? Your victim, Alexander Morrissey, he had a touch of the toxin in his system. Tetra what? Tetra detoxin. It's a toxin that's neurotoxin that's found in certain species of toads and pufferfish. In this case, your victim was injected with from a, with a poison from a pufferfish. Look, uh, I'm not an expert in fish or anything, but are you telling me that this toxin causes people to go crazy and attack other people? <laughs> Quite fortunately, no. 
But it does explain why our victim looked dead at the crime scene and when he came back to the morgue, the autopsy table, he reanimated. It does. Touch of the toxin, deadens the tongue and lips, lowers blood pressure, and relaxes all the muscles, including the diaphragm, which causes you to stop breathing. Which is why our victim looked dead. You've got to be kidding me. It's no joke. In voodoo, a puffer's poison is in the mixture given to a victim to make him a zombie. So how did he come back to life? It's all about the correct dosage. Too little, and it won't do a thing. Too much, and it'll kill your, kill your victim. The correct dosage would have to be carefully calculated for your specific, specifically for your victim. I'm assuming your killer at least has a medical degree. Which a person at biotech would have. Hey, man. Dr. Joseph Erickson. I'm sorry, we had to meet under these circumstances. Okay. That makes sense. Well, but what about the part coming back good as new? Why would they attack us? I'm looking into that right now. Your victim, Mr. Morrissey, also had another substance inside of his system. It appears to be a virus. Any idea what kind? I'm looking into that right now. Shit, 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 shit. What, 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 what? What is it? What the hell's going on? Fucking those quarantine zones. This is fucking bad, man. What did you find? I'll have to look at it closer, man, but I'm pretty sure it's found traces of... Of what? Of what? Lucidia's pestis. English! Speak English to me! Spotted the plague. I mean it, Bell. No more crazy interrogation antics. What are you talking about? You said the only way we were going to get Mark Dollard was if he had a confession. So I got a confession. What's the problem, Megan? The problem is that you put on a crazy stage play in the interrogation room. So that's perfectly legal, isn't it? This is an election year for me. I cannot afford any more mistakes. Just play by the books, understand? I'll try. Sergeant. Yeah? Have you seen Detective Haggerty around? I have not. Why? Uh, she has to report to the MA's office. There's some kind of an emergency. An emergency? What kind of emergency? Uh, I have no idea. I just got a call. The entire ME's, the entire ME's office has been locked down. Apparently, one of their victims was infected with white pestis. Really? The bubonic plague. You're the, serious? The Black Death. I'm very serious. Awesome. So what cool. you're telling me is within the last week, a seagull ate a bullet at a crime scene, yeah. a man has started murdering children, a supposedly dead victim comes back to life during an autopsy, mm -hmm. yep. and now Wildwood is about to suffer from an outbreak of the bubonic plague. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's what we're telling you. Quite a tough year for election, huh, Megan? <sighs> Some of my interrogations don't look so bad, do they? There she is. I heard you got promoted. Yeah, yeah I did. Well, um, congratulations. Thanks, Doc, but I'm not sure this is the time or the place. I see. So, do we have any word on if either of these could be Michelle Draper? Well, I'm gonna have to wait on dental records to confirm. But, it seems our killer used some sort of chemical to burn off the skin off the kid's hands. Oh my, are we sure they're related? Yeah, they cut off both of their index fingers. It's ah! a baby's finger. This might be our guy. What about the scene? Have CSIs found anything? No, there hasn't been any disturbances on the scene, except for some tire tracks. Tire tracks, huh? All right, I better head back to autopsy so I can figure out who these two are. All right, well, let me know when you know. Allison Draper isn't taking this very well, as you might imagine. Telling her that her child might have been taken by a serial killer was the hardest thing I've ever had to do. You were just doing your job. Speaking of my job, I better get back to Tony and her drunken disorderly. Keep me posted. Sounds good.
The bubonic plague. Isn't that like the black plague? The one that killed a bunch of people over in Europe like a hundred years ago? It was more than a few. And but yeah. How many people did it kill? Oh like a hundred million. Jesus. That was before modern medicine. What are the symptoms of the black plague? Oh, <laughs> you don't want to know. I can't believe this. My life officially sucks. Don't suck your life to shit. What happened? It's not the black plague. <sighs> but it was. Before it was mutated. Please explain this to me quickly. In English. Well, someone took a sample of lipases and altered it in the lab. I don't know very much about virology, but I can definitely tell you it was definitely altered. So, are you trying to tell me that's the reason Alexander Morrissey went insane and tried to attack us? Most likely, yes. Is it infectious? I don't know. Oh, hey guys! Harry, what are you doing here? Bored of the crime lab already? <laughs> nah, I love my job. Do you see how his left shoulder raised slightly when he said that? That means that he's lying. You see, a person will shrug like that when they have no faith in the words that they're saying. It's a clear sign that they're lying. Alright, Rain Man, I'm standing right here. I did not shrug my shoulder. See, he just did it again. For your information, I just came here to check on the Draper case. Well, word on the street is that they found the remains of some children on the wetlands. Uh, Ronnie's at the crime scene now, processing. That's horrible. Yeah, you still can't hide that look of uh, genuine fascination on your face. You must really miss this job, don't you? No, I don't. You really have to get better at lying, Harry. I don't know why I came in here. Because you miss it here. Seaman Sarah Inverness, United States Navy. MOS HM8404. She was a field medic. She served one tour in the Bosnian Herzegovian intervention she was declared missing in action in 1995. Tell me what happened. We were sent on a mission in January. I was with Sarah and another rifleman. The compound we were surveying was stormed by a small commando unit, and they took Sarah. She was declared missing in action that day, and by the end of the week, it was like she never even existed. Like they destroyed her records. I wish I could. I don't remember most of it. I don't remember where the compound was or what we were doing there. I just remember Sarah being taken away and being powerless to stop it. They must have given me something to forget. The only other guy there was killed in action. He must have died there. If you were given something to make you forget, how do you remember Sarah? If you knew Sarah, you wouldn't forget. She was the kindest. You loved her, didn't you? As long as I knew her. I was going to tell her once I got the balls. <clears throat> she, uh, she'd love to help. She would, uh, patch up even the lost causes and stay with the dying till the end. She, she loved people. I wonder if she even knew I existed. She was so good, you know, so pure. I didn't think there were people like that anymore. I'll be right back. Going. The new ME is still working on it. I still can't believe what I saw. He was dead. I was sure of it. Well, I'm sure there's a logical explanation. Yeah, zombie apocalypse. Right. Well, uh, let me know if you catch anything else, okay? Sure. Sarah? Inside. Go. Go.
this out. Hey, Captain. Hey, uh, sorry about putting you on that disorderly. Oh, that's fine. Uh, Tony and I finished it. The suspect's in interrogation now. Sobering up? I actually don't think he was all that drunk. Um, I mean, sure, he was talking crazy, but I think he believed everything he was babbling about. Well, we'll take care of that later. How's things with your partner? Tony's down at the medical examiner's office, following up on the zombie, and I'm working on the child case. Divide and conquer. I like that. Keep up the good work, detective. Thank you. Why did you call me by that name? Jesus, what happened to you? I asked you a question. Because that's who you are, Sarah Inverness, United States Navy. My name is Monica. Did Sarah go missing? Guess she did. Did you file a report? Hundreds. They, they keep making you disappear. Uh, Sarah, uh, well, what happened? Did they make you forget too? My memories are intact, thank you. I'm sorry I remind you of her, but I can assure you I was never in the Navy. When you talk, I can see your dimples. You used to uh, smile a lot, and I noticed. I would stare. I thought you were cute. Nobody had dimples like those. Lots of people have You weren't lots of people! Contact me or contact anyone. Who? What would they do to you? Who were those men? Don't worry about that. I never forgot you, Sarah. Other people forgot, but I never did. I deserve to know what happened, don't I? Don't I get closure after all these years? It's better that you don't know who they are or what they want. It's far better if you had never come here at all. I was taken to a place where they drugged me, gave me things to make me sleep, to keep me awake, to see things. It was always the same man. I, I would see his face in the dark sometimes, hear his voice when they gave me the drugs, sometimes talking to others, sometimes whispering to me. After a while, whenever I saw him, I would get violently ill. Like I knew that when he showed up, they were going to hurt me. I, I think he wanted me to react that way, to be afraid. And when he had power over me, he would take notes. Jesus, Sarah. And then, a government extraction team came and got me in. Why the new name? Why didn't you just tell me all of this from the beginning? I can't say anymore. Sarah... Don't call me that! <sighs> That's not who I am anymore. I'm something else now. I'm so sorry, Jake. So you do remember my name. Jake Wainwright. Petty officer, third class. You always got cookies from home. You'd share them with me because I didn't have a family. Jake, you need to listen to me. Trust no one. Do you understand? Trust no one. Yes, I do, but next time you get to come to the crime lab, I can't keep, up, keep coming up here looking for you. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. But what have you got, though? Um, what we do have is that the children, or the victims are maxed in children in Delaware. Oh, that's terrible. But at least there's a chance Michelle Draper might still be alive. <clears throat> you're taking clock on that. How do you mean? 
Well, Dr. Wagner said that the cause of death was starvation. That's mm -hmm. sick, that. Yeah, they, it took uh, roughly two weeks for children to starve. And, I mean, wherever he was keeping them, he was not feeding them. Well, the children went missing from Delaware three weeks ago. And Dr. Wagner estimates that they died about five days ago, on Monday. We must have buried them pretty soon after that because the tire tracks were fresh. Oh my god, I've got to catch this psycho. What do you know about the tire tracks? We were going to match the tire tracks to a 2003 Grand Prix. Luckily, there's only about 13 of those registered in the Wildwood area. Yeah, but is there any way we could narrow that down? Yeah, well, I had to match the dirt from the, the crime scene to the actual tire. It's pretty difficult. If you can, only if you can get me the actual car. We've got to speed this up. I think I have an idea. You want me to do what? Listen, Bill, no, you're our only chance. Please. We have 13 suspects. We need you to help us narrow it down to one. There's so many tire tracks. We can't, tr we can't match them all in time. Children's lives hang in the balance. You don't give a fuck, do you? What exactly do you want me to do, Harry? We want you to use your mutant powers, that thing you do. Right now, we have police all over the city tracking down the 13 suspects and their cars. We, instead of matching all those tire tracks, we want you to interview each one of the suspects and kind of point us in the right direction. And what's in this for me? You would be saving the lives of almost every child on the East Coast. I'll get you coffee every morning. Deal. Track them down. All right. You won't be sorry. I will be. How many creams do you like in your coffee? Just black. What exactly is Bell going to do? Harry wasn't very descriptive about the plan. Well, what exactly did Harry tell you? Not much. Just all this talk about special powers and stuff. I don't know. Well, he's not wrong. Oh, what are you saying? Bell can read minds now? I don't believe it. You know, sometimes it really seems that way. <sighs> Harry's been working with him for what? Seven years now? Mm -hmm. And suddenly... There's all this talk about powers and what? Well, I'll give you this. Harry has been working with him for seven years, but remember, I've been working with him for 11 years. And he used to be like that. Then the addiction took hold, and he really changed the pills and the booze and everything. But now that that's over, I don't know. It's, I'm starting to see the real bell again. You say that darkly, Lieutenant. It's not a bad thing. Well, for better or for worse, the, uh, the real bell is, um, uh, how can I put this? Oh, just watch, you'll see. Phil Garrison, you own a 2003 Pontiac Grand Prix, is that correct? Okay. Uh, let me ask you a few questions about your whereabouts this past week. <clears throat> Where were you Monday around at 2 o'clock? I'm sorry, I meant 4 o'clock. Well, I'd say this guy looks pretty good. Bell already called him in a lie. Do you like photos, Bill? That doesn't matter. I'm going to show them to you anyway. Why don't you uh, take a look at some of these photographs for me? Those are photos of the child victim. I don't need glasses. Let me ask you something else, Phil. What do you think of that? Well, that's new. Oh my god, get medical in there! What the hell? Have you lost your mind, Bill? Not my mind, just a little bit of my blood, see? Mm. <laughs> a little extreme, but I think I made my point. Which is? Phil Garrison could not be our child serial killer. The man faints at the sight of blood. I could tell when I was laying out the photos of the child victims, the man looked incredibly sick. And he had expressions of genuine horror on his face. Genuine horror? So what? Now you're the leading expert on emotions? Actually, I am. Detective, I keep telling you, this man's been hiding quite a skull from us. 
Uh, you did tell me something about micro emotions. Micro expressions. And what is that? Some of the FBI Quantico mumbo jumbo? Believe me, it's not mumbo jumbo. I've been learning about this since I met the guy. It's actually a proven science, Ronnie. Micro expressions are brief involuntary facial reactions that occur in the faces of human beings in direct response to the emotion that they're actually feeling. And what, only you can see them? Not the only one, but not many people can. You see, Ronnie, micro expressions occur in 1 15th of a second. Like earlier in the interview. Take a look at this. Where were you Monday around the 2 o'clock? Crow's feet around the eyes, raised cheek. That's genuine happiness on Phil Garrison's face when I asked him where he was at 2 o'clock. Happiness because at 2 o'clock, gave him a solid alibi because he was eating lunch with his friends, correct? Yes, that part of the story was true. I'm sorry, I meant 4 o'clock. Fear. Eyebrows raised, tense lower eyelids, raised upper eyelids, mouth pulled together horizontally. That's genuine horror on Phil Garrison's face when I asked him where he was at 4 o'clock. Whatever he was doing at 4 o'clock, he did not want me to know, so I kind of went from there. What do you think of that? Okay, okay, that's enough. If Phil Garrison isn't our man, then what is he hiding? Who knows? One thing humans have in common, almost all of them are always hiding something. Affairs, drugs, monies, second jobs. You've had three marriages, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. I know exactly Whatever what I'm Phil about. Garrison was hiding, it is not murder. The man faints at the sight of blood. Just the sight, just the blood from the palm of my hand made him faint. There's no way he's a serial killer. So. Well, one suspect down then, right? That's right. Twelve more to go. Yeah. Tell me about it. Oh, I got a busy day ahead of me. We all do. Go get my next victim. Yes, sir. So what numbers are we up to? I think we have five suspects left. And what if Bell eliminates all of them? Have a little faith, Thomas. He'll get our man. Besides, he's come a really long way since he's been back. Uh-huh. I mean it. I mean, I know I didn't know him all that well before, but he's just so clear-minded now. And this whole lie detector thing, it's like he's some kind of superhero. Trust me, Bell is no superhero. So how's our disorderly fool doing? He's a little loopy, but he really thinks that the government took his girlfriend when they were in the Navy. Is that so? Yes, sir, and he's very adamant about it. He says that they were given drugs to make them forget, but he's never stopped loving her. And what did we say her name was? Sarah Inverness. And what did we uh, say his name was? Jake Wainwright. I see. Did he say anything else about what happened while he was in the Navy? Nothing coherent, just that another member of their unit was apparently killed, and Sarah was taken by the enemy. He said that they erased all traces of her, but personally, I think he must have lost someone while he was overseas, and invented this whole delusion just to cope. It's truly a tragic tale. Alright, well, why don't we step back from that for a minute and take a better focus on the serial killer case. Sounds good. I'm just waiting for Detective Carson to come back. Okay. Do you work with Detective Hagney? Yes, I do, actually. She's my partner. How do you know her? She and Detective Carson came to speak with me a few days ago about the murder of one of my employees. I'm Dr. Joseph Erickson, by the way, CEO of Biotech. Hi, I'm Alex Bell, CEO of I Have to Get Back to Work. <laughs> anyway, Detective Haggerty seemed quite ill and somewhat strained. When last we spoke, I believe she even requested to leave the case. I hope she's feeling better. No, I wasn't aware of that. Very unlike her. Monica's usually the one that makes everyone around her feel a little stressed. I see. I assume that you see a lot of bizarre things in your line of work. I guess you could say that if bombs, earthquakes, and floods count. I believe they do. I 
certainly hope that things in your personal life aren't as extreme. No, ramen noodles and listening to the police scatter can get pretty bland. You know, you're quite funny, Mr. Bell. Do your co-workers think you're funny? I don't know. Things have been a little, uh, stale around here. Detective Haggerty, how good to see you again. Are you feeling better? I surely hope you still aren't feeling under the weather. What are you doing here? I was asked to come by to answer some questions by your partner, Detective Carson. And Mr. Bell was telling me that you had been feeling better. Get out. I'm sorry. Monica. Get out! Detective, that's not how you talk to people in my precinct. Or did you miss sensitivity training? Oh, it's no trouble, Captain. Detective Haggerty hasn't been feeling well lately. I'm sure it's not her fault. Doctor, let's not waste any more of your precious time. Why don't I show you out? Thank you, Captain. It was nice to meet you, Alex Bell. And it was nice to see you again, Monica. I hope that if we should run into each other again, it'll be under different circumstances. Right this way, Doctor. Thank you. You want to tell me what the hell that was all about? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, come on, Monica. You're a much better liar than that. That Dr. Erickson got really good under your skin. Why? That's none of your business, Bell. If you're going to be my partner, Monica, then it is my business. Now, whatever that guy did to you, it's got you pretty rattled. He told me you got sick when you met him during your biotech homicide. So what is it? I know you weren't distressed when you left, so that must mean you were surprised to see him there. So whatever you brought on from that... No, you... No, don't profile me! Where are you going? Where's Jake? Jake? Jake Wainwright, the guy that you picked up for the drunken disorderly, where is he? Ah, uh, we had to let him go, so Captain Thomas drove him home. He what? Drove him home. Monica, what is going on? I can't talk about that now. Just... Listen, something's going on here, I need to know about it. Is it about Jake or is it about Thomas? What's going on? I don't want you to get hurt. What? I need you to stop asking questions. There's something going on. Uh, what? It's, it's big. There's something big. There are a lot of people involved in it. People that you wouldn't expect. So it seems we both have something the other wants. Excuse me? I know what happened. You want to know why. I think we should trade that information. I just need you to be careful. I need you to keep quiet. And more than anything, I need you to promise that you won't trust anybody. Nobody. Not even John. You work for the government or something? <clears throat> In a manner of speaking. I want to know. I want to know everything about Monica. Everything. Can you, can you do that for me, please? Of course. Thank you. That's everything I told the other cops. Like I said, I don't remember much. I appreciate the information. I'm willing to tell you everything. What happened to Monica, what the government did to her, and why. What would we possibly have to do in a place like this? Tie up a loose end.
Our friend is dead. Other than Monica, he's the last one to know anything damaging. You'll have to take care of that problem soon, you know. You assured me that Mr. Bell would no longer be a threat at this stage. He seemed too far gone to be a problem. And now that Monica has won his trust, who will be next? If I remember correctly, you were the one who told me not to kill her, or I would have dealt with her years ago. And yet, years later, the girl still fascinates me. She has an extraordinary mind. How quaint that she has found an ally so like her. Belle and Monica could blow this whole operation. Let me just kill them both. I'm done with it. You lack vision, Mr. Thomas. There are far more potent ways to kill a man. That man in there is devoid of all emotion. He's a sociopath. Is there something wrong, Sergeant Bell? The FBI will be coming down later this afternoon to launch an investigation into this department. Why would they do that, Captain? Because last night, a skeleton turned up in the wetlands, and they identified the body as James Riddick. The one out there had a motive. Way to have my back, John. There he is. The devil himself. I'm Mike Franco. Detective Monica Hagney. Nice to meet you. He's here to investigate us, but really just me. Oh, we're all just doing our jobs now, are we? I know I am. Would you lie to protect Bell? No, I would not lie to protect him. Really? Well, that's very interesting. I'm the one that has to be worried. I'm the one that... Don't I'm the one that... say it. I've already told you this, Tony. They don't have any evidence. All they have is a body. They were innocent children, and you let them starve to death. <laughs> Just tell me where she is, Stuart. You slip up, I'm gonna be the one to take you down. Now you cross the line, Mike. You're gonna regret that. I'll never stop hunting you. I'm your fucking asshole, Tom. Guess what? You just earned yourself a week's suspension for that. Effective immediately. Go fuck yourself, you piece of shit.